the nature of your emergency. Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Colin, how are you? I'm good. I'm thinking about last night when we were snuggling with Bo, and he must have smelt something that got this little white piece of fuzz in his nose. <laughs> and he's like looking up and he's looking in the air, looking in the air, like trying to get it, I guess. And so I go to grab it and he like attacks my hand. <laughs> he didn't want me to get it. It was like he wanted it for himself or something. I don't know why that just popped into my head. Because he's a... He's a cranky little guy sometimes. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about decisions. And it's something that might sound simple, but I think that we have all been in a situation before where we have a choice that we need to make and we put that decision off hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes even longer. And I think that one of the most important things that I have learned as it pertains to decisions is that not making a decision in and of itself is also a choice. And I think that you'll get a lot of value out of today's episode, whether you're struggling with a decision to make right now or inevitably one that you will have to face in the future. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. I think that one of the biggest reasons that we don't like making decisions is because we fear the opportunities that we might miss out on, right? If I... I don't want to go to the party, but if I decide not to go to the party, then I might miss out on meeting up with some friends or having conversation, or I might be judged or, you know, there are a list of things. Or if I decide to quit my job and take this new job, then I might not like the new job and I might wish that I had stuck with the old one and perhaps things will get better with the old job. That's probably a really big one that a lot of people struggle with. And we can go on and on about the different types of decisions, but the the point is that there is always this battle between what is and what could be on either side of the decision. And I think that's the biggest reason why we don't like making decisions, period. But I think that something that has made the decision process much easier for me is understanding that I know that I have to make a decision, number one. And number two, when I make that decision, I am going to go all in on it. So what that means is any of the what could have been's are going to completely vanish from my mind because it doesn't matter anymore once I've made that decision. And I think that when we do that, it removes so much pressure off of ourselves because then we have a a much healthier perspective, usually a happier perspective about the, the decisions that we made. And we don't have to guilt trip ourselves on what could have been because it doesn't matter anymore once we've made the decision and decided to make the decision. And I think that there's always going to be trade-offs no matter what when we're making a decision. We need to understand that and then accept that there will be. And the way that I believe we can all get more confident is to understand the true meaning behind the word decide. And the true meaning actually is to cut off. So instead of us framing it as I need to decide something, we need to choose to frame it in a way to where we understand that it means that I need to cut something off or I need to cut something out of my life. And when we're able to understand the true meaning behind the word decide, then we're better able to understand what it means to actually make a decision in the first place. This goes along with with my practice of going all in on something. I know that when I decide something, I'm going to go full steam ahead, but I also know that I'm going to completely cut off the options of the other option in the decision-making process because it doesn't matter anymore. And I think that's where a lot of us struggle. I think that we need to learn how to make very sharp decisions. And I think the word kill is a great one to interject here. We need to kill off the other option. And When we do that, I think that it makes the decision-making process so much easier. And and you're absolutely right. I mean, I look at a lot of the stuff that we make decisions on on a regular basis. If you make a decision saying, I'm going to do this, and you only put a half-assed attempt to make this happen into it, like it's not going to happen. And there's going, you're 
going to fail. Not all the time, but you will fail if you don't put in that effort. If it's something new and you've never done before and you're trying to expand something or whatever it may be. But if, if you put in a hundred percent and I love what you said of when you make that decision, this is what you're going to do. And you put all of your effort into it, then it's going to be successful. It might not be exactly what you pictured in the beginning, but it's going to be successful on so many other levels. And I think just with anything, and like I look introspectively with like decisions that I've made with work or whatever it may be is I've taken different approaches onto, I I decided this is what I'm going to do. And I do kind of a half-assed approach to it in the beginning. And I'm like, well, that didn't work. So I just give up on it. But when I am like, you know what, I'm going to do this. And I put all this work and effort into something, it happens. And it's amazing when you have that sense of achievement after you put in that work. That's a great example. And it brings up two points for me that I think are important to discuss when it comes to the failure aspect of the decision that you have made. And the first being that you need to have the confidence in yourself, right? We can't say, this is the decision I want to make. I'm going to kill off decision B, and I'm going to go all in on decision A if we don't feel confident in ourselves to be able to do that. So whatever it takes, maybe having a conversation or reflecting on some of your skills or some of the past decisions that you've made, I think that having confidence is very important when it comes to be able to make that decision and then to not fail on the execution element of that decision. And then the second part of that is we often give ourselves too many options. And I'm going to give you some dumb examples of this. We have a a washer, a washer and dryer as everybody does. And I got to this point to where there were too many decisions on what the fuck I'm supposed to put into the washer when I'm washing the clothes. We have OxyClean. We have the Downy scent boosters. We have the Lysol laundry sanitizer. We have Tide Pods to choose from. We have liquid detergent to choose. Like there are too many things to decide to put into the fucking washing machine. And no matter how minute that might sound as you're listening to this, it's those types of decisions that I'm talking about when it comes to making our lives easier. I don't want to have to sit there for 10 extra seconds to decide, and then 20 more seconds to execute on the process of putting 32 different things into the laundry to be able to wash my clothes. And I know a lot of people who have very simplistic wardrobes for this very reason. They don't want to have an additional five minutes trying to articulate what clothes will match with their shoes and what to put together. So they wear the same simple rotation of clothes day in and day out, and they don't give two fucks what anyone else has to say about it. I think that Clint and I were similar in that regard. Clint is a little bit more on the vivacious side when it comes to his wardrobe and, and things of that nature. And I'm a little bit more on the simplistic side. Like I just want to wear very simple clothes all of the time. I, I, unless we're going out and it's something like a special event, then I like going all in on something like that. But the point is to make sure that along with our confidence in our decision-making that we also don't have extravagant things to choose from if we can avoid it. Yeah, it's something that we we sit on these decisions when they're so irrelevant to so many things. Like we struggle with making decisions on the most minute of things, like Ashley said, was the laundry detergent stuff. So now when a big decision comes up, what do you think you're going to struggle on even more so then? And, and where if you almost have a step process in, in place as you're going through this decision and simplifying it, when those big decisions come up, you're going to make a decision a lot quicker than if you had, if you didn't have something. And I want to, before we wrap this up, I want to add one more thing to this that has really helped me when it comes to making decisions. And that is to set a time limit for myself. If there's a choice that I have to make, I have tried to make it a process to make the decision as quick as I can. Mel Robbins has the five second rule where she has a decision she needs to make and she gives herself five seconds to execute that decision. 
And if it's something that I need to research or talk to somebody about, then I will set myself a time limit to make that decision. I have to make this decision by 4 p.m. today, or I will only give myself one hour or 30 minutes, like whatever the process is for you. But by setting that timeline for ourselves, it ensures that we're not going to make the decision of not making a decision, which I think is incredibly important. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.